Welcome to the 2020 Volkswagen GLI. We've been trying to get our hands on one of these for quite a while, and this week we're lucky enough to get into a six-speed manual Autobahn package. So I'm glad to share this car with you guys and uh, show you around it. Let's do a little walk around. We'll talk about some of the features, specs, and we'll take this thing for a drive, see how it does on the road. The Jetta was refreshed, and it was pretty much all new for 2019. This 2020 doesn't have any changes that I know of. The basics are two liter turbocharged engine. Same as it's always been. We've got a little bit more horsepower this time though. 228 horsepower and 258 pound feet of torque. You can get a six speed manual or a seven speed dual clutch transmission. Both are amazing options. You kind of can't go wrong with either one to be honest. I am glad we have the manual, because Volkswagen does make a nice manual transmission. And it looks like I can't open the trunk here. Let's unlock this. And we should be good. Great thing about the Jetta, it's always had ample trunk space. We even get a spare tire back there. Rear seats fold flat in 60-40 configuration. I don't know if the GLI has gotten better looking with this generation. They all kind of look about the same from uh, each update, but I think it still looks pretty attractive. You've got some classic proportions and lines and design elements with the red and the grill. I think it works. It's okay. A lot of the similar running gear from before. And uh, you know, this is a formula that Volkswagen has been doing for a long time and it still works. This is just a great overall car. It has a nice amount of usable space on the inside. Back seat room is great. And you know what? This is the uh, kind of the more grown up, mature choice for someone who wants a sporty, subcompact, midsize sedan. I think uh, practically there's pretty much all the space you could need out of a daily driver in here. It's fun to drive, it's pretty quick, and uh, there's definitely a maturity to the GLI that may not exist in some of the other competitors. While we're here, let's pop the hood, show you what it looks like underneath. There we go, pretty standard stuff. This two liter TSI is butter smooth. They always have been and uh, they've really done a nice job just making it a very silky smooth powertrain. On the interior a lot of this is going to be familiar if you've been in a Volkswagen in the last few years. Um, a lot of the same cruise control switch gear, a lot of knobs and buttons for all of your controls and a pretty simple minimalist cabin. You get, uh, you get a great Apple CarPlay system, nice little bongs and beeps when you touch it, and uh, in here you have a lot of settings and things that you can adjust, lots of apps, quick access with certain buttons. You can go in and see lots of different parameters, driving data, fuel economy, sport mode things, you have a lap timer, performance monitor, the infotainment is nice and responsive, definitely an improvement from uh, previous generations of Volkswagen infotainment. This also has a, uh, looks like, like a Beats audio system, and it's pretty decent. We'll do a little sound test at the end of this video. Quick access to your driving modes here. They change uh, suspension tuning if you have the adjustable suspension fitted to your car. And they will also enable the sound ductor. You can hear the difference there. And the gauges also change pretty quickly when you adjust these modes. This car is pretty good to drive in any of these drive modes. Before we get going today, I wanted to mention the sponsor for our video, Vincero Watches. This is their sport kind of a racing inspired watch, the Apex, and it's in rose gold black. I'm not usually a rose gold kind of guy, but actually as a dress watch and kind of a, a more formal option, 
kind of like the GLI, I do like this. Vincero offers some really nice watches for the price point. This is just under 200 bucks, and it feels like a really nice watch for that price. Right now, Vincero is offering 15% off to the Topher subscribers. All you have to do is go to vincerowatches.com slash the Topher, or put the Topher in as your discount code at checkout. As always, we appreciate their support on the channel, and if you guys are looking to improve your watch game and just want a nice overall quality timepiece with uh, lots of different options for aesthetic appeal and design, uh, Vincero is a really good way to go, and I'm sure you guys have heard of them. They do support a lot of YouTubers in the automotive space. All right, let's take this for a drive. Handbrake automatically disengages when you let out the clutch, which is nice. We have a decent reverse camera there. And as you guys can see, super quick steering ratio from this rack. It's nice for daily driving. It's great for autocross. After the Mark VI, they really sped up the steering racks in these uh, Volkswagens. So right now we're in comfort mode. Let's throw it into sport. We get a little bit more engine tone. And I actually kind of like the way this thing sounds and drives and handles in sport mode. favorite things they've done to the GLI in recent years is they've added a limited slip differential. It's a really good diff. It hooks up, it gives you a ton of traction. Second gear is super tall, it goes to 75 miles per hour. The sound is a little bit drony, but I think it actually sounds pretty good. And of course, you can go into you know, your different settings and completely turn it off. And it gets pretty quiet with just the natural engine note. I love that you can adjust all the parameters in this car and kind of set it up to suit your taste and your preferences. But you know what? This is a spirited drive. Let's put it back into sport mode and see how it feels around this entrance ramp. Again, that front diff can just hook you right up with all the traction. These hand cook Ventus tires grip pretty well. This isn't exactly as uh, active of a chassis as the GTI, but it's still quite satisfying to drive. This six-speed manual shifter is quite good in typical Volkswagen fashion. It's a lighter shifter than I'm used to, but um, really my only complaint with this car from a drivability standpoint is there is a little bit of rev hang. definitely nowhere near as bad as the Civic Si, and chances are if you're getting one of these you're probably going to get it tuned, and uh, that'll definitely take care of it. One thing that is a little bit strange is this manual transmission car has a two-stage accelerator pedal, so there's just a little bit of resistance at the bottom of the pedal travel to shift down in the DSG, and uh, it's interesting that they didn't bother changing that pedal box or pedal configuration for the manual transmission car. They must not be selling as many manuals anymore and it's just not worth the effort. But kind of, I found that feels like kind of a cop-out for me from Volkswagen. I wish they uh, they got rid of that because it's a little bit weird to have that, that two-stage pedal in a manual car. I do love this two-liter engine. It's super rev happy, very responsive, buttery smooth. The pedals are pretty well spaced for heel toe. The brake is a little bit sensitive, so you do have to be kind of careful when you're downshifting and, and uh, into a braking zone. But once you kind of adjust your feet 
to get used to it all. It works pretty well. And there's just so much traction and rev hang <laughs> out of corners. Alright, let's throw it back into, let's put it into comfort mode here and just cruise around a little bit. That has always been the great thing about the GLI, is it's just a great all-rounder. And uh, you can have fun in it, you can drive it in a sporting manner, but also it'll settle down and become a comfortable daily driver and cruiser. Of course, whenever I drive a Volkswagen, they are very quiet inside and very refined feeling, but there are always a few little creaks and rattles and uh, that was one thing that bugged me a lot about my Mark 6 GTI. There are a few in this car too. Um, nothing really that's popping up consistently, but every now and then until the car kind of warms up, you'll hear something in the door or in the back with the seat belt. And uh, just something to be aware of. I'm not sure I've driven many Volkswagens that don't have a few rattles here and there. guys well let's go in and do a little bit of a sound system test the audio quality in this is quite good That gives you a pretty good idea of the sound system. It's great, it sounds really nice. No major complaints there. And I do like you that you can turn the screen off and it just shows you a clock. And you can switch through different styles, which is pretty neat. Of course, if you're wearing your Ventura watch, you don't really need that, but that's okay. Let's talk about one of this car's highlights, fuel economy. This and the Civic SI both get phenomenal gas mileage. This is rated for 33 on the highway, but you can probably do better. And uh, just driving this around normally all week, on the readout, I've been getting about 30 miles to the gallon, no matter what I do, which is pretty nice. That's partially due to the taller gearing in this car. I do wish that they kept the gearing a little bit shorter, but we're, with the power that this thing makes, it's actually not horrible. You would get slightly better ratios with the seven-speed dual clutch, um, 
but if you want to drive a manual and you're probably going to get this thing tuned, I would recommend the six speed. It is a really nice gearbox and I mean, it's a fun, enjoyable driving experience. Volkswagen has always done a nice job with their manuals. You get a little bit of cool turbo whistle in the background there as well. And there's a lot of torque here too, even at lower RPMs. It makes some fun noises, that's for sure. If you guys are listening to this with binaural or just headphones, I'm recording this with binaural microphones. You might be able to hear a little bit of that turbo whistling away there. <laughs> All right, guys, well, there's the GLI. Not much has changed. Volkswagen has stuck to their tried and true formula with this car and it works you know I think at this point I I kind of feel like the interior is feeling is a little bit dated it just it feels so similar to what they've done for the last 10 12 years but you know what it's a very nice interior for the price point and compared to the competition it's near the top and um, I don't think Hyundai really beats this and I don't think Honda really beats this with the Civic. So, you know, I mean, one of these Autobahn packages is such a well-rounded package that um, it might be a pretty compelling purchase. I did enjoy my GTI back in the day when I owned it. It was just that nice blend of uh, a sporty, enjoyable daily driver. And I think that's what you will get here. Not much has changed with that formula. So, all right, guys, that's going to wrap up some initial impressions on this GLI. Thanks for watching. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments. Hit the link in the description or the top comment if you want to check out VenturoWatches.com slash the Topher. And, uh, yeah, we'll see you guys in the next video. We'll also be posting some videos on Winding Road Magazine, a day drive, night drive, and I'm sure Charlie on Daily Motor will do his videos, a little bit more in-depth sound test and review on his channel. Some nice interior lighting on this too. These change depending on your drive mode. It's the little things. I'm noticing is this isn't quite working as well as it should. There we go. Yeah, still not a bad looking sedan.